Amused, an open news reproduction. This is a paper by Shiraz Patel, William Bourbon, Robin Robach, and Patrick von Platten from Hacking Base and Stability AI, published on the 3rd of January 2024. It is the 3rd of January 2024, and this is the Agora Paper Group. Abstract. We present Amused, an open source, lightweight, masked image model, MIM for text-to-image generation based on Muse. With 10% of Muse's parameters, Amused is focused on fast image generation. We believe MIM is underexplored compared to latent diffusion, the prevailing approach for text-to-image generation. Compared to latent diffusion, MIM requires fewer inference steps and is more interpretable. Additionally, MIM can be fine-tuned to learn additional styles with only a single image. We hope to encourage further exploration of MIM by demonstrating its effectiveness on large-scale image text-to-image generation and releasing reproducible training code. That so is... Put on Huggy Face. Hugging Face is GitHub supposedly, but the link doesn't work. We also released checkpoints for two models which directly produce images at 256 by 256 and 512 by 512. That's probably up. Introduction. In recent years, diffusion-based text-to-image generative models have achieved unprecedented quality. Improvements can be mainly attributed to large open source pre-training datasets, pre-trained text encoders, latent image encoding methods, and improved sampling algorithms. MIM has proven to be a promising alternative to diffusion models for image generation. MIM's repeated parallel prediction of all tokens is particularly efficient for high resolution data like images. While diffusion models usually require 20 or more sampling steps during inference, MIM allows for image generation in as few as 10 steps. That's pretty amazing. MIM brings the modeling approach closer to the well-researched field of language modeling. Consequently, MIM can directly benefit from findings of the LM research community, including quantization schemes, token sampling methods, and token based uncertainty estimation. As MIM's default prediction objective mirrors in-painting, MIM demonstrates an impressive zero-shot in-painting performance, whereas diffusion models generally require additional fine-tuning. Moreover, recent style transfer research has shown effective single image style transfers for MIM but diffusion models have not exhibited the same success. Despite MIM's numerous benefits over diffusion-based image generation methods, its adoption has been limited. Proposed architectures require significant computational resources. For example, Muse uses a 4.6 billion parameter text encoder, a 3 billion parameter base transformer, and a 1 billion parameter super resolution transformer. Additionally, previous models have not released training code and modeling weights. We believe an open source lightweight model will support the community to further develop MIM. In this work, we introduce a Muse, an efficient open source 800 million parameter model based on Muse. A Muse uses a clip L slash 14 text encoder, a stable diffusion XL style micro-conditioning, and a U-bit backbone. The U-bit backbone eliminates the need for a super-resolution model, allowing us to successfully train a single stage 512 by 512 resolution model. The design is focused on reduced complexity and reduced computational requirements to facilitate broader use and experimentation within the scientific community. We demonstrate many advantages, such as 8-bit 4-bit and 8-bit quantization, zero-shot in-painting, and single-image style transfer with style draw. 
we release all relevant model weights in source code. Uh, related work. Token-based image generation. SRL 2021 demonstrated the effectiveness of VQGAN generated image token embeddings for autoregressive transformer-based image modeling. With large-scale text image datasets, autoregressive image generation can yield state-of-the-art results in image quality. Additionally, autoregressive token prediction allows framing image and text generation as the same task, opening an exciting research direction for grounded multimodal generative models. While effective, autoregressive image generation is computationally expensive. Generating a single image can require hundreds of thousands of token predictions. As images are not inherently sequential, Chang et al. 2022 proposed MIM. MIM predicts all masked image tokens in parallel for a fixed number of inference steps. On each step, a predetermined percentage of the most confident predictions are fixed, and all other tokens are remasked. MIM's training objective mirrors BERT's training objective. However, MIM uses a varied masking ratio to support iterative sampling starting from only masked tokens. Consequently, MUSE successfully applied MIM to large-scale text image generation. MUSE uses a VQGAN with a fine-tuned decoder, a 3 billion parameter transformer, and a 1 billion parameter super resolution transformer. Additionally, MUSE is conditioned on text embeddings from the pre-trained T5XXL text encoder. To improve image quality when predicting 512 by 512 resolution images, MUSE uses super resolution model conditioned on predicted tokens from a 256 by 256 resolution model. As MIM's default prediction objective mirrors in-painting, MUSE demonstrates impressive zero-shot in-painting results. In contrast, diffusion models generally require additional fine-tuning for in-painting. MIM has not been adopted by the research community to the same degree as diffusion models. We believe this is mainly due to a lack of lightweight open source models. For example, MUSE is closed source and has a 4.5 billion parameter text encoder, a 3 billion parameter base model, and a 1 billion parameter super resolution model. Point two, few step diffusion models. Diffusion models are currently the prevailing modeling approach for text image generation. Diffusion models are trained to remove noise from a target image at incrementally decreasing levels of noise. Models are frequently trained on 1,000 noise levels, but noise levels can be skipped or approximated without suffering a significant loss in image quality. As of writing this report, effective denoising strategies require as few as 20 steps to generate images with little to dis indistinguishable quality degradation compared to denoising at each trained noise level. 20 sampling steps is still prohibitively expensive for real-time image generation. Diffusion models can be further distilled to sample in as few as one to four sampling steps. Salmons and Ho 2022 shows how a pre-trained diffusion model can be distilled to sample in half the number of sampling steps. This distillation can be repeated multiple times to produce a model that requires as few as two to four sampling steps. Additionally, framing the denoising process as a deterministic ordinary differential equation integration, consistency models can learn to directly predict the same fully denoised image from any intermediate noisy image on the ODE trajectory, Song et al. 2021. Lau et al. 2023a and Lau et al. 2023b were the first to successfully apply consistency distillation to large-scale text image datasets, generating high-quality images in as few as four inference steps. SAR et al. 2023 demonstrated an adversarial loss objective and score distillation sampling. Pool et al. 2022 objective can be combined to distill to few-step sampling. 
The still diffusion models are faster than the current MIM models. However, still diffusion models require a powerful teacher model. A teacher model requires additional training complexity, additional training memory, and limits the image quality of the distilled model. MIM's training objective does not require a teacher model or approximate inference algorithm and is fundamentally designed to acquire fewer sampling steps. 2.3. Interpretability of text-to-image models. Autoregressive image modeling and MIM output explicit token probability output explicit token probabilities, which naturally measure predictive confidence. Token probability-based language models have been used to research model interpretability. We do not extensively explore the interpretability of token prediction image models, but we believe that this is an interesting future research direction. 3. Method EQGAN we trained a 146 million parameter DQGAN with no self-attention layers, a vocabulary size of 8192, and a latent dimension of 64. Our VQGAN downsamples resolutions by 16x, that is a 256 by 256 resolution image is reduced to 16 by 16 latent codes. We trained our VQGAN for 2.5 million steps. Text conditioning. Due to our focus on inference speed, we decided to condition our model on text embeddings from a smaller clip model instead of T5 XSL. We experimented with both the original clip one quarter and the equivalently sized clip model released with data comp. Even with the reported improvements in the Gaboral 2023, we found that the original clip one what uh, about the 14 resulted in qualitatively better images. The penultimate text encoder hidden states are injected via the standard cross attention mechanism. Additionally, the final pulled text hidden encoder hidden states are injected via the adaptive normalization layers. UVIT. For the base model, we used a variant of the UVIT, a transformer, and inspired scalable unit. Hodgman uh, 2023 finds that UNETs can be effectively scaled by increasing the number of low resolution blocks as the increased parameters are more than compensated for by the small feature maps. Additionally, Hodgman 2023 turns the lowest resolution blocks into a transformer by replacing convolution blocks with MLPs. For our 256 by 256 resolution model, we used no downsampling or upsampling in the convolutional residual blocks. For our 512 by 512 resolution model, we used a single 2x downsampling and corresponding 2x upsampling in the convolutional residual blocks. As a result, the lower resolution UVIT of the 256 by 256 and 512 by 512 models receive an input vector sequence of 256 with a feature dimension of 10,024. The 256 by 256 resolution model has 603 million parameters and the 512 by 512 resolution has 608 million parameters. The 5 million additional parameters in the 512 by 512 resolution model are due to the additional down and up sampling layers. Masking schedule. Following MUSE and MaskGet use a cosine based masking schedule. After each step T of predicted tokens, those with the most confident predictions are permanently unmasked such that the proportion of tokens masked is cos one uh, t over t uh, times pi over two, with t being the total number of sampling steps. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. We use T equals 12 sampling steps in all of our evaluation experiments. 
The revelations Chen et al. 2022 shows that concave masking schedules, like the cosine, outperform convex masking schedules. Chang et al. 2022 hypothesizes that concave masking schedules benefit from fewer fixed predictions earlier in the denoising process and more fixed predictions later in the denoising process. Micro conditioning. Just as Pavel et al. 2023, we micro condition on the original image resolution, crop coordinates, and lay on aesthetic score. The micro conditioning values projected to sinusoidal embeddings and applied as additional channels to the final pooled text encoder hidden states. And, uh, I'm going to talk about figure one. Uh, would you like to take this, Kai? Yeah. So, um, Thank you. All right, just disregard everything that's happened in this photo and just look to the left. All right, there's a lot of noise in this photo. but So we have text, right? We want to take text and make it to an image. So what do we need to do, ladies and gentlemen? Well, we need to take the embeddings of the text. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We have a red cat. Then we're going to use clip L14, which is a pre-trained model to extract the text embeddings. Um, then we're going to get the encoder hidden states, which are the embeddings for this text, which is a red cat. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is this is the embeddings are going to be split up and sent to three different places inside the UVIT. Okay, you're going to be sent into the convolutional block, the transformer blocks, and the convolutional blocks on the bottom of the diagram. And so basically what's going to happen, we're going to get some output of the MLM layer, which is going to be a tensor. Then we are going to, I don't know what, what is the times 12? 12. So, the, so they're doing this 12, this loop 12 times. This is my guess. So, okay. And yeah, so after 12 eight, iterations, eight. all tokens have been predicted and decoded. No, that could be something else. So we have times 12. Then this is going to be sent into the VQ, uh, VQ GAN decoder, which is going to output an image. Um, the tensor, the output tensor of UVA, will also spit out and will also um, get the MIM loss. And yeah, so that's that's training. So there's both training and inference here. And the just yeah. the, the regular black is like the, the regular of like the regular pipeline. So, so the let me break this down for is only on training. It's only on inference. Yeah, so to resummarize this in, in inference, we take the text embedding, feed it into three different places in the UVIT, get a tensor, multiply that by twelve times, or just uh, run it 12 times from uh, I don't know what that means exactly um, we run the VQ, VQ, uh, VQ GAN decoder we get an image then we also take the we take the tensor right before we pass it into the VQ GAN decoder we mask it 50% mask with a cosine of 8 divided by 12 times pi divided by 2 lowest probability tokens at 8 step out of 12. Um, so we get this masked, um, we get this mass tensor, and then this is then fed into the, um, this is then fed into the convolutional block as well. And so that's for inference. For training, we have the tensor, which is the output of UBIT. Then we take the min loss, which I forgot what that means. Do you know what that means? Masked image model. <laughs> this is that what it means? Masked image model, yes. Masked image model. That's interesting. 
So we take the mm loss. Um, then on the other side of the uh, of the process, we have an image of a cat, which is sent to a, a VQ GAN encoder. It's going to output the embeddings for the image. Then we're going to sample that R U zero to one mass cosine R multiplied pi divided by two mass thirty percent of tokens for R zero point zero eight zero point eight. And then that's going to give you a mass that is then going to be sent back into the model in the first convolutional block. And that's my analysis. So what do you think of this model? Well, I think this diagram is pretty stupid. <laughs> they could have just had two different diagrams. They're just adding more noise in one okay. by having all these diagrams on one place. Um, everybody's using VQGAN. I don't know why. Like, VQGAN is not that good anymore. It's really outdated. So a, a major area of improvement here would be using something better than VQGAN, uh, which is, again, very old and came out like three, three years ago, maybe. What would, you, what would you suggest instead? I don't know. Um, just make something new. Okay. Or maybe stable diffusion. Stable diffusion, Dolly. Um, any of the other image models that are text image diffusion models that are good. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thank the you. UVIT, I need a, I, I haven't read the UVIT paper. We should probably, probably look into that. So this appears to me to be a downsampling, convolution to a downsampling to a transformer, an upsampling to a convolution to an MLM layer. And so this would be a unit, but with only with an input and an output that is a down sample and an up sample. Where do you see a unit? There's no unit here. So the U is uh, usually there are multiple down sample and multiple up sample. And this is like the inner, inner, inner loop of a unit, which is at one down sample, transformer block, and one up sample. Oh, are there actually units with the vision model? Oh, so this is the U bit, which is the U net part of the bit visual transformer, and the down sample and the up sample are uh, what I'm thinking they will label it as the U, and that's only traditional now because with only two layers, it doesn't really look like a U, but you can add many more down sample and up samples which m look more you like. I don't think they need it. I don't think they need it. Yeah, so... Um... So, I'm trying to figure out the masked image model loss. Uh-huh. There... There... They're masking based on the probability of a token, where you're looking at le le only taking 30% of the token uh, for the R of 0.8. So after they get the VQ again, then they're combining 30% of the tokens with the output of the model and going around again. They don't actually say how many times they go around on the training. Is it, so it will be as many times as they need to minimize the loss function, I guess. And they'll mention how many training loops they went, but it will be many more than 12, I'm assuming. That could be just the number of... Um, that could be the number of UVIT blocks.
which is commonly referred to as the def. So how many layers of this blue layer do you have? That could be one option. But other than that, I don't know what that means. Could mean resolution. I've seen this syntax for resolution. During training, the VQBAN encoder maps images to a 16x smaller latent resolution. The proportion of masked latent totens tokens is sampled from a cosine masking schedule that is cos r times pi over 2 with r uniform in 0 to 1. The, mass, uh, the model is trained by a cross entropy loss to predict the masked tokens. After the model is trained on 256 by 256 images, downsampling and upsampling layers are added and training is continued on 512 by 512 images so that you don't get the downsampling and upside for much of the initial training. Okay, that makes sense. During inference, UVIP is conditioned on the text encoder's hidden state and iteratively predicts the values for all mask tokens. The cosine masking schedule determines the percentage of the most confident token predictions to be fixed after every iteration. After 12 iterations, all tokens have been predicted and are decoded by the VQGAN into image pixels. So the, the, the 12 steps comes from the uh, mask, uh, cosine masking schedule. Hmm. And have we gone over this enough? Shall I move on? Uh, yeah. Uh, do you want to do the experimental setup? No. Okay. Do you want training details? Uh, yeah. I do. Training details. For pre-training, the VQGAN and text encoder weights were frozen, and only the UVITs of the respective models were trained. The 256 by 256 resolution model was trained on 228 to A100 servers for 1 million steps and used a per GPU batch size of 128 for a total batch size of 2048. The 512 by 512 resolution model was initialized from step 84,000 of the 256 by 256 resolution model and continued to train for 554,000 steps on two Oh, two 8x100 servers, not 28. Two 8x1 A100 servers. The 512 by 512 resolution model used a per GPU batch size of 64 for a total batch size of 10,024. Masked rate sampling. Following Chang et al. 2022 and Chang et al. 2023, the percentage of masked latent tokens was sampled from a cosine masking schedule. For example, cos r t times pi over 2 with r sampled from uniform 0 through 1. Chang et al. 2022 ablates different choices of masking schedules, finding that concave functions outperform convex functions. They hypothesize that this is due to more challenging masking ratios during training. So if one is t to look at implementing uh, this, you probably want to read those two papers. 4.2, fine-tuning. Uh, the Chang et al. 2022, Chang et al. 2023 papers have essential details on the masking schedules. Oh. Is this not open source? Oh, this is, yes. But that was why they got to it, and they ablate the masking schedules. There's quite a bit of de uh, uh, detail in how they picked it, and that would probably be a good thing to do if you were looking at uh, modifying the open source software. Yeah. 4.2, fine-tuning. We further fine tuned the 256 by 256 resolution model for 80,000 steps on JourneyDB. 
We also further fine tuned the 512 by 512 model for 2,000 steps on Journey DP. Synthetic generated images, images generated by Stable Diffusion XL from Leon Coco Captions. Unsplash light and Leon TV above a 6 aesthetic score. We found that the synthetic image generated by Stable Diffusion XL from Leon Coco Captions qualitatively improved text image alignment. 512 by 512 resolution model was fine-tuned for more, much fewer steps than the 256 by 256 model because it began to overfit on the fine-tuning data. To improve the reconstruction of high-resolution images, we further fine-tuned the VQGAN decoder on a data set of images greater than 1024 by 1024 resolution. The VQGAN decoder was fine-tuned on two 8 times A100 servers for 200,000 steps and used a per-GPU batch size of 16 for a total batch size of 256. Results. Uh, the A140 gig end-to-end -end image generation time. Um, Stable Diffusion XL takes 18.47 uh, seconds with a batch size of 8 or 2.7 seconds with a batch size of 1. Uh, Amused 512 takes a second with a batch size of 8 and a half a second with a batch size of 1. And the little amused uh, takes 0.6 seconds or 0.47 seconds. Very, very fast. 5.1 inference speed. Amused inference speed is superior to non distilled diffusion models and competitive with few step distilled diffusion models. Compared to many popular diffusion models, amused scales pair particularly well with batch size, making it a good choice for text-to-image applications that require high throughput. For batch size 1, single-step distilled diffusion models such as SD Turbo and SD XL Turbo outperform both of our 256 by 256 and 512 by 512 resolution models. Notably, SD Turbo generates higher resolution images than your 256 by 256 resolution model by being 3.5 times faster. Compared to batch size 1, the end-to-end -end generation time for batch size 8 of SD Turbo is reduced by 3.6 times. However, amused 256 by 256 resolution models inference time decreases only by 1.28 x or 1.8x for 512 by 512. At batch size 8, SD Turbo is still the fastest image generation model, but it is only 1.3 times faster than our 256 by 256 resolution model. At batch size 8, I'm used to 256 256 resolution model outperforms the four-step latency consistency model by a factor of 3x and slightly poor on 512. Both amused models are significantly faster than non-distilled diffusion models compared to stable diffusion 1.5. 512 by 512 resolution amused model is 1.6 times faster at batch size 1. At batch size 8, state-of-the-art SDXL is in order, the orders of magnitude slower than both amused models. Model quality. Any questions about the speed. Okay. Model quality. We benchmarked both the amused models and zero shot FID and inception score on the MS COCO 2017 validation set with two samples per caption for a total of 10k samples. Due to I of reported metrics or ambiguity in measurement methodologies, we manually ran quality benchmarks for all models we compared against. Our 512 by 512 resolution model has competitive clip scores. However, both our 256 by 256 and 512 by 512 resolution models lag behind in FID and inception scores. Subjectively, both models perform well at low detail images with few subjects, such as landscapes. Both models may perform well for highly detailed images such as faces or those with many subjects, but require prompting and cherry-picking. 
C3. Uh, they have CLIP versus FI Detroit off curve and the CLIP score versus the classifier free gradients guidance scale. Um, the lowest one on the CLIP versus classifier shows the Amused 512 is the lowest on all of them. I assume lower is better. And uh, on the CLIP versus FID, it has a high FID score and a lower CLIP score. So I don't know. I think it looks good. I'm assuming that's what good looks like. Oh, these images look good. They are cherry picked images. Images are slightly degraded for file size considerations. Style drop. Style drop is an efficient fine tuning method for learning a new style from a small number of images. And it has an optional first step to ad generate additional training samples, which can be used to augment a training data set. Style drop demonstrates effective single example image style adoption, amused and amused. Sun et al. 2023 shows that similar fine-tuning procedures such as LoRa Dream Booth on Stable Diffusion and Dream Booth on Imogen do not show the same degree of style adherence. Figure 5 compares a LoRa Dream Booth Stable Diffusion training run with a style drop training run on Amused. Using the same reference training image and example prompts, style drop on Amused demonstrates much stronger style adherence in our experiments with Amused, we achieved good results with fine-tuning on a single image and not generating any additional training steps. Style drop can cheaply fine-tune Amused in this view is 1,500 to 2,000 training steps. So we've got the reference images, a mushroom and V style, and the top row uh, shows Amused 256 by 256 style drop, which does keep the style consistently. And the bottom row is um, Stable Diffusion 1.5, and the style just isn't there. Eight bit quantization. Token based modeling allows for the use of techniques from language modeling literature such as 8 bit quantization for transformer feed forward and attention projection layers. Using 8 bit quantization, we can load the whole model with as little as 800 mega VRAM, making mobile and CPU applications more feasible. Uh, the amused models with 8 bit quantization look good. 5.5 Task Transfer. Image variation and in, in painting. Similar to Chang et al. 2023, Amused performs zero shot image editing tasks such as image variation and in, in painting. For mask token based image modeling, both in, image variation and in, in painting are close to the default training objective, so both tasks use a regular decoding procedure. For image variation, some number of latent tokens are masked with more masked latent tokens corresponding to more variation from the original image. For in-painting, the in-painting mask directly determines which tokens are initially masked. Uh, figure 7, a 256 by 256 variation has an original image of an apple and then one uh, and then done as a watercolor. And the next one is the 512 by 512, showing the original image and then adding winter mountains, which is subtle but plausible. And the final one, figure 9, shows in painting, where the original image has a lake and the uh, mask is applied to the lake region and it is filled in with mountains. Video generation. We further extend Amused to zero-shot video generation by modifying text to video zero. Text to video zero operates on stable diffusion's continuous latents. Noise latents are worked by varying amounts to produce latents for successive frames. Additional noise is then added to the frame latents. During the standard denoising process, self-attention is replaced with cross-attention over the first frame to maintain temporal consistency. 
Because Amused operates on quantized latents, we must first dequantize the latents before they are warped. We can then requantize the warped latents. Because Amused latent space is discrete, we completely remask the boundary of the image warp which creates consistent background image backgrounds from frame to frame. We found that the the between frame cross attention degraded quality for frames warped too far away from the initial frame, so we did not use the modified self attention and instead performed the warp much later in the denoising process. And figure ten shows video generation examples with the full link to the GitHub, which has the videos. And, uh, you see that? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can. And it's moving. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Oh, so much for them. <laughs> yeah. And this is the next one. Conclusion. We introduced Amuse to lightweight and open source reproduction of Muse. Our primary goal was to achieve fast sampling and provided an efficient alternative to diffusion models. And our reproduction of Muse demonstrated competitive zero shot image variation and in painting without requiring task specific training. We made several modifications for efficiency, including the use of the smaller clip on. 14 text encoder and an efficient UVIT backbone. Our results show that amused inference speed is comparable, is competitive with the distilled diffusion based text to image models, particularly when scaling with batch size. Additionally, amused demonstrates efficient fine tuning capabilities, providing flexibility for various applications. We hope that by open sourcing all model weights and code, Further research into masked image modeling for text image generation is made up possible. I'm going to do, take a look again at the code, which I failed to click through on the first go. See how good it is. It's not there. But the models are up. It's almost as if like they ha they wrote no code but wrote a paper on like what what would happen if they wrote code. <laughs> Maybe. And then Maybe they, the they, they write the code after they they write the paper. Maybe I think somebody should just missed it. He hasn't uploaded anything since the holiday. There is a code name Open Muse. Amused. Amused. Open Muse. Open Muse. And I think it's the same author. Uh, you can search in the GitHub named Open Muse. I have seen this project before. Well, it was yeah. released today. Where did you see it before? Search it first. Okay, I will. I will give you a link. There it is. Yes, it is. Put this in the papers. Go, 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 Kai! It's not implemented? That looks like code to me. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't see anything. Go. Yeah. We found the code! Where is it? Uh, it's 
on GitHub. I put it in the papers channel under the paper. Thank you, Chato. That was an excellent find. Yes, as I have seen a paper named PixArt, uh, which is a similar transformer text to image model like this, but uh, it used diffusion objective. Can you send me the link for the code? Yep. Where do you want it? In the paper channel. Of it's, it's in the paper channel. It's a comment on the amused paper. <laughs> Try and be at least one step ahead of you, Kai. Sometimes I succeed. That's, that's good. Anyway, I'm running out of steam. Rapidly running out of steam. Um, this model is interesting. Um, the training and the inference is very fast, which is cool. Um, I'd be interested in seeing something other than VQ again. If only because I don't really have much familiarity with uh, uh, the visual question answering space. Um, thank you. What do you think, Kai? Well, there's a lot of improvements that could be made to this model. Um, like maybe using a better vid, better unit. Um, I also think that they could be using a better backbone, better than VQ again. Um, the mo the majority of the model here is they didn't really do anything new. They just used VQ again. Um, it would be nice if someone made a new VQ again that was much much better, uh, ten times better at least, and like cheaper to run, better quality images, like in, a, in every way. Um, I, I think that would be much better. And I think that starts with the tokenizer. You can't good, create good models if you're not tokenizing the images correctly. Um, that's why Magvit was made, so. Um, I definitely think it could be improved. My rating would probably be a six out of 10. Um, they do open source like the the documentation is is good. So I give at least an extra point for being open source. They didn't aim too high with what they did. They achieved what they were doing as a basis for further open source exploration. I think this is solid, so at least a seven. Yeah. This is more engineering than research. Um, like they actually, like they have a lot of code. They have benchmark file folder, config folder, muse folder, scripts folder, slurm scripts. Like, this is all engineering. Um, so, I think a combination of novel algorithms, which is true research, and engineering are like the culmination of the best papers. So, I definitely think it could have been better on the research side. So, what is Muse good at? Is it just... So, it's a novel uh, technique which doesn't use a diffusion model. Oh, that's um, right. It's fast. It's fast. It's fast and good. Also, it's better at uh, style preservation and in painting. They'll do zero shot in painting, which is quite a, an achievement. Mm. 
So I think uh, that they have actually come up with something which is an, uh, a step forward, which is all they need to do for a research paper. And I agree, it's a good engineering paper. Yeah. There is a lot to learn from this, like the masking strategies, the training infrastructure, there's a lot to learn. We good? Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for another good day. I'm done. share a paper with you, PixArt Alpha. <laughs> oh, nice. Share it in, the, in yeah. the papers channel. We have a paper just for, we have a channel just for papers. Okay, okay. I think it's a, it's a transformer test to image model similar to the paper we discussed just now. Oh, nice.